your figures out today and they're suggesting that we're storing a record amount of stuff in self-storage units. Now, I don't quite get this because I just think if you don't need it, throw it away, recycle it, get rid of it. It's big business though and Ben's in one of the units now. Morning, Ben. Morning to you. Yeah, who'd have thought I'd be in a self-storage unit this morning talking about a booming industry? But places like this are really big business right now. Record numbers of figures. So let me run you through what we know. Well, in the UK, we've got 45.6 uh, million square foot of space like this. In fact, the UK is home to uh, half of all the storage space in Europe, we really are a nation of storers. Now, earlier I said we're a nation of hoarders and the boss told me off, but nonetheless, we like to put it away. Um, and it means that, uh, well, on average, about a third of customers keep spaces like this for more than three years. So it clearly is stuff that they want to hang on to. Uh, and a space like this, well, it'll cost you just over £2,000 a year. Now, it might seem like a lot of money, mightn't it? But if you're trying to get rid of stuff out of your house, it's certainly cheaper than buying a bigger place. And that's why places like this are doing pretty well. Well, let me introduce you to Oliver, who's been crunching all the numbers on this for us. Oliver, morning. Good morning. Why are places like this so important? Because clearly you can't go very far in the country right now without seeing one of these pop up. Well, I think um, there are all sorts of reasons why people need to use self-storage, and uh, it's clearly a growing industry. Uh, we see a third of users are businesses, and they find that very helpful. It offers, offers uh, uh, flexibility. You can be straight in and straight out, and it takes a long time to, to lease a, a business unit. And then we have personal customers, a third of whom are probably moving house or having some life-changing event, mm -hmm. uh, and a third of whom uh, are long-term users. So. And these sort of things tell us a lot, don't they, about the sort of social makeup. You know, you talk there about, you know, funerals, weddings, big life events, moving house. But it also suggests actually maybe houses are a little bit too small, so we need to put stuff away. Yeah, I think we have a lot of storage in the UK versus Europe because we do have um, slightly smaller houses and slightly more expensive uh, houses than other people in Europe. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a change in society that we see going forward. I mean, we think use will, you know, continue. Uh, um, and not just residential customers. It's not just the likes of you and me putting stuff away while we go abroad or move house. A lot of businesses are now using places like this. Yeah, so as I said, I think a third of customers uh, are businesses, uh, and it's all sorts of businesses. Uh, I, think, uh, I think it's something like uh, half of them are professional services yeah. and retailers storing their stock, but every sort of business you can think of has a need for storage space. Yeah, it's really fascinating. What's behind these doors, isn't it? Oliver, for now, thanks so much. Well, come with me and let's have a look at what is behind some of these yellow doors, because as Oliver explains, some of those customers are business customers. One of them is Steve. Steve, good morning. Uh, nice to see you. Um, look, I mean, you've got your place here, haven't you? Behind the yellow doors, and you've just upgraded to a bigger unit. Why do you use a storage unit and not uh, you know, a factory or a warehouse? Hey, very flexible um, we appreciate the flexibility we can upgrade we can downgrade as needs of the business so for us I think it's a lot more commercially viable yeah. um, a lot we're not tied into contracts uh, we can swap and change as we need as the business goes up and grows down and what you do all these parts around us here these are parts for boilers and, and services so for, for boilers or? for domestic appliances um, uh, so they come into here they're picked up at reception and then we store them waiting for the customers jobs and that means then that your engineers rather than having to come to your house which is That's how right. it used to be to Absolutely. pick up those parts yeah. they can come here pick it up and go out and do a job they can yes they come here they let themselves in they've got access um, six to eleven come in pick the parts up and then off they go uh, Steve, good luck. Nice to see you. We'll talk more a little later. So there you have it. I mean, look, it's fascinating, isn't it? The amount of things that are stored behind these doors in places like this. And as you heard, they're increasingly businesses. Flexible. They've got access to use these places. So, uh, yeah, popping up up and down the country. And uh, it seems that we're hanging on to stuff for a lot longer. But as you can see, businesses also making use of all that space that is now available. Ben, thanks very much. Now, that's interesting, having a business mm. there, isn't it? Because you don't have to worry about other overheads. Business rates, electricity, etc., etc. Et uh, it is it's kind of fascinating, those places. Are uh, you watching Breakfast from BBC News? Man. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 7.26 is the time now. We're talking about uh, where people store their stuff and self-storage. You, you rent a unit, basically, and mm. put stuff in there. You don't know what else to do with it. Ben's been looking into it for us this morning. It's Stockport. Morning, Ben. 
Morning. I get all the glamorous assignments done. But yeah, good morning. Look, I mean, it's funny talking about something like this because this is a, a unit um, and it's been used by business, increasingly businesses using the sort of flexible storage space rather than having to commit to a factory or a warehouse or that sort of thing. They use these self-storage units. Uh, the UK, incidentally, has half of all the self-storage space in Europe. It's a staggering amount of money and the bosses here say, look, it's about death, divorce and moving house. Those are the things that you tend to use these places for to store all sorts of stuff. I mean, just take a look in this room here. This is one of the biggest ones that they've got. It'll set you back maybe £2,000 a year. It might sound like a lot of money, but actually, if you think it's much cheaper than moving house or having to go somewhere else. So businesses and residential customers using them too. So really big business. Uh, but the big question, should we not just be getting rid of all this stuff in the first place? We're going to speak to a decluttering expert a little later. But let's get the news, the travel and the weather where you're watching Breakfast this morning. See you soon. Um, new figures out today suggest that we store a record amount of stuff in self-storage units. And I was, I've, been I've been confused by this story because I kind of put it down to people just dumping stuff and being hoarders. But actually, there were some really practical uses for storage units. All sorts of uses. All human life, as they say, Ben, is in, are, are stored in those places, right? Yeah, they've been telling me this morning it's all about death, divorce and moving house. That's why you might want to use one of these places. But really big business is self-storage in the UK right now. Uh, and these things popping up all over the place because we want that flexibility of being able to get rid of stuff or maybe just move it out of the house and deal with it later. Well, let me introduce you to Ben, who is the store manager here. Ben, morning to you. Morning. Look, you get a pretty good insight, don't you, into kind of probably the most stressful periods in people's lives, if we say death, divorce or moving house. You've got an idea of why they use these storage units. What are they for? To be honest with you, it's, it's such a wide spectrum of, of uses. 70% um, of our customers are domestics, 30% business. Um, anything from moving house, doing renovations. For businesses, it could be stock, it could be spare parts. Uh, and anything in between really. Yeah, and it's that idea of businesses using it as well, because I traditionally would just think it was someone like you said, moving house, but now, I mean, this one, this is a, a boiler supplies firm, you know, and they do repairs, they've got all this kit here. Why do businesses use them? Um, it's, it's often um, somewhere where they can hold stock, we can receive deliveries on behalf of our customers, so it, we're just a link in the chain where we can help them with, uh, with running their business. Um, online retailers, um, spare parts like these here, um, lots of reps, whether it's um, stock or uh, point of sale. So there's so many different reasons why businesses would use us as well. Ben, it's nice to see you. We'll talk more a little later for now. Thanks very much. So there you have it. I mean, what's so interesting about this thing is that in the UK, uh, it accounts for half of all the storage uh, self-storage across Europe. It's an astonishing figure uh, and it shows just how important it is. Some suggesting maybe it's because our houses are a bit smaller in this country. Maybe it suggests that we're all a bit more transient, more of us renting a house rather than owning it. So we need places to put stuff. So lots of issues there. But you might say, and Nagy, you touched on this, why don't we just get rid of this stuff in the first place? Why are we hanging on to it? Uh, well, one woman who can probably tell us is Catherine. She's a decluttering expert. Catherine, look, you've been decluttering in here already. Good morning. Um, look, why are we hanging on to all this stuff? Why don't we just get rid of it all? Um, I think yeah, a lot of it is that people really, um, they just, they can't see the way past it. They've acquired all this stuff. It's very overwhelming. Um, it's easier to just put it in storage, out of sight, out of mind. But something like this, though, I mean, we're in one of the biggest units here. It costs just over £2,000 a year for it. It's a lot of money if it's stuff that you don't actually need that you should just get rid of, isn't it? It is. It, it's very pricey. Um, and I think that people can very much... Like I say, you, you do it, you forget about it, the money comes out every month. It's easier. Um, excess stuff can cause a lot of anxiety and sometimes we just, we just want, we don't want to have to think about that, we don't want to have to face it. Yeah. Um, a little later I'm going to get some top tips from you about how we might think about decluttering a little bit but for now Catherine thanks so much nice to see you uh, so there you have it we're going to talk a little bit later uh, about that what you might want to do to get rid of some stuff uh, and some top tips but uh, before we do that let's get the news the travel and the weather wherever you're watching breakfast this morning we'll see you soon uh, let's see two minutes past nine uh, new figures out today suggest we are, are are you do you guys get hoard. rid of stuff do you, do you hoard, hoard things 
I'm quite a family of hoarders, I'm, so I'm not bad you? at getting rid of stuff. Is there rooms full of things? My is sister's there... a terrible hoarder. I, so I, I keep sentimental things. I struggle to get rid of sentimental things. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we're talking I, about I'm these storage vicious. spaces, you know, where people put stuff and then sort of just leave it there. Sexy Ben's out there. Hooray. Oh, yes, Ben is there. You're absolutely right. Ben is there. I think that's what you meant to say. Yes, Ben is there. That's what you meant to say. What did you say? Sexy Ben. That's who he is. Ben. It's Ben. That's from Russell T. Davis. I think you're getting the call for the next newscaster role. <laughs> I think we got a communication problem there with the, the, the storage unit. Speak, Ben. Ben, can you hear us? Uh, good morning. <laughs> I can hear you. Yeah, I'm just trying to work out the party that's going on back in the studio. Good morning. Welcome to sunny Stockport. Uh, and we're here because I'm talking about self-storage this morning, of all things. But the reason I'm doing that is because it is big business. Uh, these places are popping up all over the country. Uh, and traditionally, we might assume that it is somewhere that you just leave all the bits of furniture and bits of stuff that you just can't bear to part with. But increasingly now, business is getting involved too. And let me introduce you to two business owners that are with me this morning. Uh, Steve and John are with me. Morning to both. Steve, let me start with you because, look, you used to have what, a smaller unit here. You've just upgraded to this bigger one. Why? Why do you use a self-storage unit? It's the flexibility that it offers us. We're not tied into contracts as such. We're not, no, no commercial leases and such like, so for us it, it works. So for you it's, it's better than having a, what, a big warehouse or a big factory? It would cost me triple, four times the amount to, to, do, to have this slot unit in a commercial environment. Yeah. Uh, and John, I mean, yours is a slightly different business, isn't yeah. it? So you distribute tools and that sort of thing. Um, and you use that primarily for a place to get all your deliveries. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I used to get all my deliveries to home, um, but it was making my home life a nightmare. So, because um, delivery drivers would be knocking on the door um, all day long, which is disturbing my family life. So, um, and I've transferred it here. They take my deliveries for me, put them in the room. Um, makes my life easier when I go on holiday. Don't have to do worry about cancelling my orders or anything like that. Just all goes upstairs into my storage unit. Also makes family life a bit easier, doesn't it? It does make my family life a hell of a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his wife won't tell him off. Nice to see you both. Thanks very much. Uh, we'll chat with him a little later. Uh, but look, I mean, you've got a sense over the businesses that are using these things, but it's also about all of us. I mean, the figures are pretty astonishing. 45.6 million square feet of space up and down the country. That's actually half of all the storage space that there is in Europe is right here in the UK. Lots of reasons for that. Some suggesting it's about you know marriage, divorce, moving house, those are the times that we might use these things uh, but also perhaps because our houses are a little smaller than they are elsewhere and also because there's a lot more people renting these days so they use these places to get them through but we we're talking about clutter a little earlier and look Catherine is our decluttering expert and she's been decluttering this unit for us morning to you that we're talking in the introduction about decluttering about how we just can't bear to part with things sometimes can we you've got some top tips for what we might want to consider so if we've got too much stuff at home what do we need to think about um, well, I'd say before you get stuck in with your bin bags, you know, tempting as that is, definitely think about what you want to achieve uh, by creating this space. What's your vision? Do you just want a house where you can invite people around at the drop of a hat? Do you want space to do your hobby? Yeah. Um, that'll motivate, you know, once you've got that vision, it motivate you to keep going and to get the space decluttered. So um, once you've done that, I would say the next thing to do is to try and sort your items by category. Um, if you try to tackle a whole room at once, um, you can get clutter migration. You just tend to move things around yeah. and they never actually get sorted <laughs> or thrown away. And you don't get rid of it at all. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So um, if you put all of your category in one space, say all your paperwork, all your books, mm. you can see exactly how much you've got. Um, and it perhaps also would shock you into get rid of, getting rid of more of it than you might otherwise do. And that's the motivation, is it? We just need a reason to do it and maybe break some of those sentimental ties and once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah, well, yeah that's right. Catherine, thank you. Really nice to see you. Uh, so there you have it. I mean, look, business booming as far as these places are concerned. All sorts of reasons why we might consider using these sort of flexible spaces. They don't come cheap. Something like this may be costing you about £2,000 a year, but some would also say uh, that's a damn sight cheaper than getting a bigger house house. Uh, so from here in Stockport, let's get the news, the travel and the weather where you're watching breakfast this morning.